In 1974, the NPR program Voices in the Wind first broadcast the Christmas story, written and read by John Henry Falk. Falk died in 1990. In 1994, we pulled the tape from our archives and put it on the air at Christmas. You loved his story and his reading of it so much that it's become an annual tradition on our show. So it's our pleasure to continue that tradition today. The day after Christmas, a number of years ago, I was driving down a country road in Texas, and it's a bitter, cold, cold morning. And walking ahead of me on the gravel road was a little barefooted boy, with nondescript ragged overalls and a makeshift sleeve of a sweater tied around his little ears. I stopped and picked him up. Looked like he was about twelve years old, and his little feet were blue with the cold. He's carrying an orange, and he got in and had the brightest blue eyes one ever saw. And he turned a bright smile on my face. And says, "I'm a going down the road about two miles to my cousin's. I want to show him my orange. Old Sandy Claus brought me." Well, I wasn't going to mention Christmas to him because I figured he came from a family that kind of don't have Christmas. But he brought it up himself. He said, "Did old Sandy Claus come to see you, Mister?" And I said, "Yes, we had a real nice Christmas at our house, and I hope you had the same." He paused for a moment, looked at me, and then, with all the sincerity in the world, said, "Mister, we had the wonderfulest Christmas in the new nine states down to our place. Lordy, it was the first one we ever had had there. See, we never do have 'em out there much. Don't notice when Christmas time comes. We'd heard about it, but never did have one 'cause." Uh, Well, you know, it just Papa says that old Sandy Claus, Papa Hurrahs a lot. Said old Sandy Claus was scared to bring his reindeer down into our section of the county 'cause folks down there are so hard up that they liable to catch one of his reindeer and butcher him for meat. But just just several days before Christmas, a lady come out from town and she told all the families through there, our family too. That there was old Sandy Claus was coming town to leave some things for us, and if Papa'd go in town, he could get some Christmas time for all of us. And Papa hooked up the mule and wagon. He went in town, but he told us children, said, "Now don't y'all get all worked up and excited because there might not be nothing to this yarn that lady told." And, but Chuck, he hadn't got out of sight up the lane there. We was done watching for him to come back. We couldn't get our minds on nothing else, you know. And Mama, she'd come door once in a while and say, "Now y'all quit that looking up the lane, 'cause Papa told you there might not be nothing." And, but long about the middle of the afternoon, well, we heard the team of jangling the harness a coming, and we ran out in the front yard. And Ernie, my little brother, called out, said, "Yonder come Papa!" And here come them mules just in a big trot, you know. And Papa standing up right in the bed of that wagon, holding two big old chickens, all feathers picked off, and he was just yelling, "Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas!" And the team stopped right in front of the gate, and all us children just went swarming out there like a like a flock of chee-chees, you know, and just crawling over that wagon and looking in. And Mister, I wish you could have seen what was in that wagon. It's bags of stripy de candy, and apples and oranges and sacks of flour, and some real coffee, you know, and just just all tensely and pretty, and we couldn't say nothing, just. Kind of held her breath and looked at it, you know. And Papa standing there just waving them two chickens and yelling, "Merry Christmas to you, Merry Christmas to you," and a laugh and that big old grin on his face. And Mama, she come a hurrying out with the baby in her arms, you know. And when she looked in that wagon, she just stopped and Papa he dropped them two chickens and wrenched and caught the baby out of her arms, you know, and held him up and said. Merry Christmas to you, Sandy Claus, and, and, and baby little old Alvy Lee. He just he just laughed like he knowed it was Christmas too, you know. And Mama, she started telling us the name of all it. Them nuts. It wasn't just peanuts. There was she had names for all of them. She, Mama knows a heap of things like that. She'd seen that stuff before, you know. And we's all of us just a chattering and a going on at the same time. Us youngins are looking in there, and all of a sudden we heard Papa call out. 
Merry Christmas to you, Sam Jackson. And we stopped and looked, and here comes Sam Jackson leading that old cripple leg mule of his up the lane. And Papa said, Sam Jackson, did you get in town and get some Christmas this year? Sam Jackson, you know, he sharecrops over there across the creek from our place. And he shook his head and said, well, no, sir, Mr. Will, I didn't go in town. I heard about that, but I didn't know it was for colored folks, too. I thought it was just for you white families. All of a sudden, none of us children were saying nothing. Papa, he, he looked down at Mama. And Mama looked up at him, and they didn't say nothing like they don't a heap of times, but they know what the others are thinking. They're like that, you know. And all of a sudden, Papa, he broke out in a big grin again. He said, Dad, blame it. Sam Jackson, the sure good thing you come by here. Lord have mercy. I like to forgot. Old Sandy Claus would have me in court if he'd heard about this. The last thing he asked me if I lived out here near you. Said he hadn't seen you around and said he wanted me to bring part of this out here to you and your family. Your old woman and your children. Well, sir, Sam Jackson, he broke out in a big grin. And Papa said, I'll tell you what to do. You get your wife and children and you come down here tomorrow morning. It's going to be Christmas time all day long. Come early and stay late. And Sam Jackson said, you reckon? And Mama called out to him and said, yes, and you tell your wife to be sure and bring some pots and pans because we're going to have a heap of cooking to do, and I ain't sure I've got enough to take care of all of it. Well, sir, old Sam Jackson, he started off uh, leading that mule up the lane in a full trot, you know, and he was heading home to get the word to his folks and his children, you know. And next morning, it just, you remember how it was yesterday morning? Just rosy red and looked like Christmas time. It's cold, but you didn't notice the cold, you know, and the sun just come up, just all rosy red, and us young'uns were all out of bed for daylight, seemed like, just running in the kitchen and smelling and looking, and it was all there, sure enough. And here comes Sam Jackson and his his team and his wife and his five young'uns in there, and it's all looking over the edge, and we run out and yell, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, and Papa said, Christmas? gift to you, Sam Jackson. Y'all come on in. And they come in, and Mama and Sister Jackson, they got in the kitchen, and they started uh, cooking things up. And us youngins started playing Christmas time. And it's a lot of fun, you know. We just play Christmas gift with one another and run around and around the house and just roll in the dirt, you know. And then we started playing, go up to the kitchen door and smell. And we'd run up and smell inside that kitchen door where Mom and Sister Jackson was cooking at. And then we'd just die laughing and roll in the dirt, you know, and, and go chasing around and playing Christmas gift. And we played Christmas time till we just wore ourselves out. And Papa and Sam Jackson, they'd put a table up and put some sheets over it, some boards up over some sawhorses. And everybody had a place, even the baby. And Mom and Sister Jackson said, well, now it's ready to Come on in, we're going to have Christmas dinner. And I sit right next to Willie Jackson, you know, and he'd just roll his eyes at me, and I'd roll mine, and it, we'd just die laughing, you know, and there was an apple and an orange and some striped candy at everybody's place, and that was just dessert, see, that wasn't a real Christmas dinner. Mama and them had done cooked that up, and they just had it spread up and down the table. And so Papa and Sam Jackson, they'd been sitting on the front porch, and they come in. Papa, he sit at one end of the table, and Sam Jackson sit at the other, and it was just a beautiful table like you never had seen. And I didn't know nothing could ever look like that and smell that good, you know. And Sam Jackson, you know, he's real black, and he had on that white clean shirt of his and in them overhauls. Everything had been washed and was real clean. Papa, he said, Brother Jackson, I believe you're a deacon in the church. I ain't much of a church man myself, but I believe you're a deacon. Maybe you... You'd be willing to give grace. Well, Sam Jackson, he stood up there, and his hands was real big, and he kind of held on to the side of that table, you know. But he didn't bow his head like a heap of folks do when they're saying blessing. He just looked up and smiled, and he said, Lord, I hope you having as nice a Christmas up there with your angels as we have it down here, because <laughs> it's sure is Christmas time down here. And I just wanted to say, Merry Christmas to you, Lord. Like I say, mister, I believe that was the wonderfulest Christmas in the United States of America.
The Christmas Story, told and written by the late John Henry Falk, our annual holiday gift to you. This is NPR's Weekend Edition. I'm Leanne Hansen.